there's the saying. I think it's kind of an annoying saying, but we'll go with it. The best player on that particular week wins the players. And it's like, well, no kidding. That's that's every tournament. But <laughs> Scotty Scheffler is your defending champion of the players. And he's also the winner from last week. He will take on Rory McIlroy, Xander Shoffley, Justin Thomas, and everyone else from this loaded field at the players. Welcome to Tea Time. I am Andy from wagertalk.com, being joined, as always, by my good friend and golf betting buddy, Nick Borman. Nick, it kind of feels like it's a step up in the golf season. We're here to the players. The Masters is right around the corner. Uh, we finally had a chalk winner last week. So, uh, <laughs> so um, Scotty Scheffler can putt. That has got to be terrifying for the rest of the field. And we're going to break down everything and get you ready to turn a profit. But before we get into the course and the field, we're going to do DraftKings Darlings. We're going to give you an outright winner. Nick, you got some really nice trends that we want to talk about real quick before we get in there. So we got some player trends, course experience in current form. So let's start there and kind of narrow this field down a little bit on who we should be looking at this week. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll break it down into three categories. First, we're going to start with the anti Scotty trend, which there's two of them, right? It's very difficult to not want to bet Scotty. I don't fault anybody for betting Scotty uh, in any sort of way, but there are two trends that are hard to ignore that suggest he will not be this week's champion. First and foremost, and fifth, this is now the 50th players championship there has never been a repeat champion never Andy so that's hard to ignore but listen streaks are meant to be broken of course and Scotty's probably one that can do it but that is out there uh the other important one and this one I don't know if it's just luck or what really is the 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 player here but it's the tea time wave I'm sure you've seen this you know online floating around but 14 of the last 16 players champions have played in the Thursday a.m friday p.m wave and again you know i'm not going back 16 years and try to correlate the weather and trying to figure out if that was really just luck or if that had some sort of effect on anything but another anti scotty streak so two the two reasons why scotty isn't going to win that week this week and those are the only two reasons i could have possibly come up with that he won't, won't win <laughs> the other streaks or excuse me trends to pay attention to this this week i got a couple for the course so it's important to have some history here. Uh, aside from the very first edition of the players, there's only been two first-time winners of this event in the 49 previous years. 15 of the last 16 winners of the players have finished at least 23rd or better in a previous player. So they've obviously played here and played well. And then 10 of the last 13 have played in at least five players. Again, suggesting several years of knowledge around a Pete Dye track will help you. And then current form, you got to be playing well coming in. Each of the last 25 winners has made the cut in their previous start. So if anybody played last week, did not make the cut, cross them off your list. 17 of the last 19 winners rank in the top 35 in strokes gained approach over the previous 12 months. 10 of the last 12 in the top 45 around the green. And we'll talk about that a little bit, but those are the two metrics I'm looking at the most. And that clearly highlights that. So over the last 12 months, those are important trends. And 11 of the last 12 winners have finished at least 22nd in their previous start. So not only did they make the cut, but they played pretty well the week prior as well. So those are just some of the trends that have proven true at the Players' Championship. A little course experience and, of course, good form. Nothing, no rocket science, but some of those individualized stats about which specific data point makes sense are, are worth noting, which is approaching around the green. Yeah, you know, there's only one player in this field who's finished top 10 the last two years here. That's Victor Hovland. It's hard to believe with these big names <laughs> that you can't get. Is, yeah. Even Scotty, you know, even Scotty was 55th and miscut uh, the two previous years. So it's a difficult wow. course. Yeah, it's a difficult course and tournament to try and repeat big time finishes. So uh, if you're looking at the weather for this week, you brought up the waves. If there is a better wave, I think it's going to you know, I don't think you're going to want to be in that Friday p.m. It looks like as of now, we're recording this on Tuesday, the winds are going to be at the highest on Friday afternoon. So if you're looking who's got the uh the tougher draw, the Thursday a.m. and the Friday p.m., those are your, that's Victor Hovland, Rory McIlroy, Jordan Spieth, Sam Burns, Xander Shoffley, Tommy Fleetwood, those are guys that are teeing off. Then, of course, you got Scheffler in the, the afternoon with Fowler, Justin Thomas, uh, Matsuyama, Max Homa, um, some of those guys. So, yeah, if, you're, if you really believe in the weather, go ahead and uh, take a look at the tee times. They're out 
and uh, we'll get y'all get y'all situated there. Let's take a look at the course. Uh, it's just an iconic course, Nick, TPC Sawgrass. It's one of the more famous courses on tour. It doesn't favor a certain type of player. You can't go back and say, well, it, you know, definitely bombers hit there or definitely the hottest putter coming in. Um, there's the saying, I think it's kind of an annoying saying, but we'll go with it. The saying that the best player on that particular week wins the players. And it's like, well, no kidding. That's, that's every turn, but <laughs> it just, it, it just goes to show that it requires everything. You need accuracy off the tee. You need good shot making around the green. You need to, to navigate these greens. They're pretty smooth. It's been wet down in Florida. So the greens are receptive. You're not going to get a ton of roll on the fairways, but I think the course conditions are going to be, you know, really, really good. Uh, Roy McIlroy commented about the move. This tournament used to be played later in the year when it was much more warm and you had some different conditions around the green. Roy said that um, the rough around the greens are not as punishing now that it's played in March and it lends itself to more aggressive play. So we're probably looking at players that aren't as worried about being caught up in the thick rough like they were years ago. Tons of bunkers. Uh, there's water across most of the holes. Greens are very smooth, and this course really, really rewards great shots. This is not a course like a U.S. Open where you can hit a great shot and the ball can roll off the green and you can still be in be in trouble if you are playing well. The course is going to reward really, really good shot making. So I got this peg kind of between maybe, I don't know, minus 17 and minus 20 in that range is the winning score. I think you're going to have some guys go really, really low. Um, as Again, as of now when we recorded this, Friday late and maybe Sunday late. It doesn't look like there's anything so severe would be the, the worry with the weather here. So um, love that they have a beautiful hole by hole flyover video with voiceover. You can find that on YouTube. That's a really quick search. There's three holes that I really love at this course. We can talk about those. The first one is the eighth hole. It is a long par three, 237 yards by numbers, the hardest green to hit. In regulation, there's trouble almost everywhere. And the length, you know, you got to get the club selection absolutely perfect. And if you fade the ball, it's just not going to land on the green. You, your, your shot has to be absolutely accurate. Otherwise, you're off the green. And you got to get up and down for par. So I love a really, really good uh, uh, hard par three on the eighth hole. Hole 12, I like this hole, 358 yards par four. Uh, this is not the original Pete Dye design on this hole technically it's drivable, but man, there's trouble in the water. There's bunker. It's a very, very high risk, high reward hole. I think there's going to be quite a few layups and then guys trusting their short game to get up and down. Um, but it's a really, really fun, short par four hole uh, that you're going to see some high scores on and you're going to see some really, really awesome shot making if these guys can drive it pretty close uh, to the green. So these really longer drivers like Rory, Cameron Young, those guys are going to have some really nice rips at it. And of course, Nick, we have to talk about, I mean, top three hole on the PGA Tour, the 137-yard par three <laughs> island hole, hole 17, island green that just... I don't know. It, you, you say to yourself, well, 137 yards, par three, how hard could it be? And every year, just tons of balls into the water on that uh, voiceover video that I mentioned. The course says every year they pull out 120,000 golf balls every year. That's awesome. Every, isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, they've said that it averages over three golf balls in the water per golfer that comes through there. So it's a oh it's a God. short one, but I know, I know. And you'll see guys fly the ball directly into the water. You'll see guys hit the green and have it roll off into the water. To me, that has to be like one of the most frustrating things. And then on <laughs> top of that, I don't I don't think the drop zone is very easy. I, no, I think the drop true. zone is, so it's not like you just Yes, and you, it's only you just walk up and pitch it on there. No big deal. So it's a brutal one. We've we've seen some monster scores on this one. So uh, Nick, what's your thought on uh, on this course here? You hit a couple things right on the head that I kind of want to you know reverberate. It's it's you mentioned this. This is Pete Dye shtick. He he really rewards good shot making uh, and accuracy is his thing. He doesn't care about too much about length. But you're right. If you hit a good shots. You've seen this uh, in low scores over the years. The course will reward you for those, but if you miss by a yard, 
then you're going to get penalized pretty pretty severely and double can quickly come into play. I'm going to add one more thing about you mentioned the rough and you know the general idea that the rough is a little bit less severe this time of year. Well, Bay Hill's not too far away and we saw how Blatt played last week because this particular winter has been a little wetter than normal. So I am curious to know, you know, how it's going to actually play this week, but they, those guys really did struggle. There were some really deep spots, especially by the end of the week. Uh, with some of that rough last week and winning score you mentioned uh, where you thought it might be going this year last year Scotty ran away with it at 17 under was the score he was five shots clear and there was only four players that reached 10 under par Uh, his score was the second lowest total dating back to 1996 so it's generally not a course you're going to get many at least into the double digit under par area Um, but again we we don't know how it's going to necessarily play yet but I do think the rough will be a little bit thicker than you would normally uh, see this time of year. Um, that's kind of all I have for you to add on the course, and we'll get here next, I guess, into the uh, into the field. Absolutely. If you're enjoying the gambling content, please hit the like button and subscribe. Make sure you get notified when all of these videos pop up on the Wager Talk YouTube channel, and leave us a comment. We love the comments. We love seeing who everyone is on this week. Going to be a lot of different picks, I'm, I'm guessing, in the comment section for this one. So, <laughs> Tell us head-to-head matchups, who you like to win, what are your best bets, uh, best field of the year. So join us in the comments section. We've got a great community here on Tea Time. So hit the like button, subscribe, and leave us a comment. And we have a special that we are running, and you can get this on both my page and Nick's page at wagertalk.com. We're going to run a special for 30 days of golf plays. You get both of our plays And it runs all the way up until the Masters, Nick. So they're going to get the Masters plays included with this. So we want to do a special where you're going to get, yeah, where you're going to get the players and the Masters plays. Nick is coming off of a beautiful 5% win on Scotty Scheffler uh, to finish in the top 10. I'm coming off 4% win. I had Scotty Scheffler over Roy McIlroy. So uh, pretty (laughs) nice, easy wins for us there. So uh, it's been a really, really good year of golf betting. So you can take advantage of that. No promo code needed. Just go to Andy Lang at wagertalk.com or Nick Borman, wagertalk.com. You get both of us and let's just keep the profits rolling here. So let's get into strokes gained, Nick. Finally. Finally, someone comes off. Someone comes off this graphic. Let's take a look at total strokes gained and uh, what can we decipher all this? Who's hot? Who's not? And who are we looking at for this week? I've been waiting all year to see. See, Andy, this is this graphic means something. It actually does help predict some winners. Uh, so finally, has come to fruition. Although nobody really want, really likes the true plus six hundred favorite to win. I, I usually like the twenty five to fifty sweet spot range, which you can see is a lot of these guys in the in the bottom half of this graphic, but. I digress. Of course, Scotty leads the way. Whether you look over a long sample, you can go back 24 months, or you can probably go back even longer, but 12 months, six months, three months, it doesn't matter. He's up at the top, and rightfully so. The guy is just head and shoulders above everybody else in terms of ball striking, and his putter has always held him back, but he putted great last week. He gained a lot of – he gained strokes putting, and that shows what – how much better he is in the field when he actually puts well, so it's a scary thing. But as you can see here, the list is sort of like the odds board. Um, there are a couple anomalies on there. You know, uh, Justin Thomas, if you look over a 12-month period, you're not going to find him in the top 10. Obviously, he had a rough year last year, but he's been trending and playing very, very well as of late. So he's down there in my notable section. I try to highlight guys that might not fit the top 10 over the last 12 months, but are trending in, in good directions or have had recent uh, good results. Uh, Victor Hovland is a guy you mentioned earlier, Andy. Obviously, you know, FedEx Cup champion, played excellent in the fall, hasn't really teed it up much, so his numbers may be skewed a little bit, especially in the last three months window. As you can see, that's dropped off quite a bit, so one or two bad results can kind of, you know, change that and from what it really might be, so I'm a little hesitant on him this week. Um, Fleetwood, another guy going in the wrong direction, he was really bad uh, last week. Jordan Spieth, he's always just... He's just flash, man. He, he just, you never know what you're going to get from him. You're going to get a 62 and you're going to get a 78. So you never really quite know. Um, but Rory, another guy, obviously, what's crazy to me this week is um, how far he's fallen as far as like odds. Like normally he's in the nine. I, I say fallen like it's a big number, but 14 to 1 on Rory is kind of rare. Usually you're under 10 to 1. Uh, I think we saw that last week. I think he was 9 to 1, maybe at best 10 to 1. So I know it's a slightly deeper field. But Scotty in this field is actually a lower price point than he was 
at double the size. Last week he was plus 650. This week he's plus 550. So just tells you everything you need to know right there. So this is our top 10 this week going in. Uh, a lot of these guys will be guys I circle in on, whether it's outrights or top 10s or top 20s, but they're all guys I'm looking at for one reason or another. And uh, there'll be a couple on there I mentioned. Maybe Victor. I might leave off the betting card, but that's your top 10 for this weekend. Let's take a look at some players that can trip you up. These are higher priced players that I think are going to be popular bets this week. And just telling you, I think these guys are going to uh, give you some problems here. And I, I don't know. I, I almost didn't put Rory McIlroy in here because who's betting on Rory at this point? At this point? It's He's true. been awful. <laughs> He's been absolutely awful. When you go to data golf and you, and you put in, Total strokes gained. He's going to pop up in the top 10. But then you go to the filters and you put PGA Tour only. You get If you take <laughs> yeah. away that first place and second place on the DP World Tour, World events that he, he, he killed it early in the season, and you just do PGA Tour, he is bad. He's yet to finish in the top 20. Austin Eckro, Adam Hadwin, Bo Hostler, all better. Total stroke game in Roy McIlroy this year. Who? He's missed the cut. Yeah, he's missed the cut in three out of the last five years he's played here. So it's not like he's, you know, dominant at this course. Um, he has a win and a 33rd as his other two finishes here. But this is just not a course he plays very well at. He's completely unbettable. My big play last week was Scotty Scheffler minus 130 over Rory. That same matchup is Scheffler minus 200 against him. And I would absolutely take Scheffler. Over Rory, I, 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 he's he's completely going on name value. I know he's super likable and everyone loves him, but the fact is, he's been bad. His performance last week was was awful with some of the shots that he put in the water. Um, it's he's just he's unbettable. He's not even getting in the top twenty. You can't even bet on him to finish in the top twenty. And now it's the most loaded field of the year. So I think we're I think people are still going to hang on to the name Rory McIlroy and look at the odds. He's priced as like a top three favorite, no chance. So Rory McIlroy's first guy um, that can trip you up. There are a few guys on that top ten total strokes gain list that I could have put on here. Uh, Hoblin was one of them, but I'm going to go with Patrick Cantlay, and mostly because he just doesn't have great course history here he's finished 19th miscut 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 23rd 22nd and he's stumbled out of the gate this season I, you know guys like him and hovland and shoffley not not really on point here so uh he has one finish in the top 10 this year he's 15th in total strokes gained and he's priced as a top five guy i'm just not going to be betting on him until he's shown that he's really going to compete with these guys i mean right now i i can't take him to be in the top 10 to compete with some of the other guys on this field. I mean, him versus Scotty Scheffler, no way. So Patrick Kelly yeah. is going to be a guy that, you know, I think he's going to be a guy that people will put in there again, name value. And I'm just not, I'm not buying it. So I debated with this third one. I'm going to go out on a limb and go with Sam Burns. Uh, listen, Nick, he was, I was ready to buy into him. He had four top 10 finishes in a row and he looked like he was well on his way to a really good finish last week. And that last round was alarming. And Sam Burns has always been plagued with inconsistencies. And that 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 last round he had was like, oh my gosh, is this a sign of things to come? <laughs> he fell all the way down to 30th. And I know he's he he has not done well at this tournament. 35th, 26th miscut his last three appearances. His total strokes gain numbers are great, but I just thought that was a gigantic red flag that last round. Maybe I'm overreacting, but we've just seen this guy just have really good finishes and then just really clunky bad ones. So I think you're rolling the dice with Sam Burns, but when you're looking at the rankings and you're looking at the total strokes gained, he's going to be at the top of list. So I think people are going to put them in lineups. I think they're going to bet on him. And I'm just saying, uh, I'm not ready to, to bet on Sam Burns just yet. I hope I'm wrong. I hope he rips off another top 10. That would be great if he consistently goes up there because we could use more guys consistently finishing in the top 10, but Sam Burns is not going to be a player that I bet on. So Rory McIlroy, Patrick Cantley, and Sam Burns, three players that I think can trip you up. Nick, let's take a look at one of these guys that you think has a chance at an outright win. Who do we have circled for this week? I always sweat through your segment, Andy. Thankfully, I am not circled in on any of those guys that you were avoiding, so that makes me happy. Uh, one guy I am circling in on here this week is Zalatoris. So 
obviously he's coming in off the uh, the the injury from last year. We had back surgery, and and you know, re- understandably so. I avoided him. I think a lot of people have avoided him as far as betting because you don't really know what you're going to get. Right? He kind of came. He came back at the unofficial uh, Hero World Challenge. He finished dead last in that event. That was in December. He then missed the cut in his first official start at the Sony Open, but he showed signs of life the following week uh, at the American Express with a tie for 34th. And I think you mentioned that. You highlighted that on one of our previous shows. Uh, It made all the sense in the world, like I said, to wait and see on him. But if you haven't jumped on him yet, I think now is the time. He finished tied for 13th at the Farmers Insurance Open. And then since that, joint runner-up at the Genesis Invitational and a tie for fourth last week. And Listen, at one point, I was on Zalatoris last week, and I'm just going back to him. At one point on Saturday, Andy, Zalatoris had a five-stroke lead uh, before, you know, a couple of two double bogeys on the back nine saw that quickly disappear. So he has the ability to get there, uh, and I was I was loving life at that point. It was <laughs> very short-lived. It felt like an hour. I was like, all right, this is great. And then, like, you know, 30 minutes later, I'm like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> um, but, listen, his putting stroke, everybody gives that a lot of attention, right? It ain't pretty. But that's okay. It's been very effective the last four weeks. He's gained over a half a stroke per round each of the last four tournaments. And much like we saw from Scheffler last week, if Zalatoris gains stroke putting, he's going to contend because he is one of the best ball strikers out there. So I think his injury is behind him. Uh, his putter is rolling. He's got confidence there. And his TD Green game is just it's just very, very good. So he's a guy at the Players' Championship in tough conditions that I want to be behind. And he's 30-1 to right now. So I like Willie Z this weekend he has an outright play i love that play as well and i will also point out he's plus 150 for top 20 on draft teams ah, right now it. like the, yeah like like victor hovland is plus 125 i i would take zelatoris in a heartbeat over guys like him and uh you know kala morikawa is plus 130 after what kala morikawa <laughs> yeah. did last week i i, I yeah. i'm i'm with you that there might be a very small window to capitalize on zelatoris if he rips mm-hmm. off one more really, really good finish, I think yeah. the cat's out of the bag, you know. So I agree. I agree yeah. completely that this is a great pick for this week. So uh, that is your outright winner. Make sure you hit the like button and leave us a comment. Let's take a look at DraftKings Darlings. These are very low-priced guys. And my full lineup is on a free article on my profile page on wagertalk.com. And Nick, I found a way to put Scotty Scheffler into the lineup. Uh, he's by far the most. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's it. You, you just kind of have to. So I'll start with Andrew Novak at 6,400. Uh, listen, this is a guy who has not played great at this tournament, but his last three tournaments, let, let me let me read you this guy's finishes this year. Here's how he starts the year. Miscut, miscut, miscut. The next three, <laughs> eighth, eighth, ninth. What is what? What is that? <laughs> yeah, what is that with Andrew Novak? So at 6,400, it's worth a shot. Maybe he had a little change in his swing or he picked up something. I don't know. But this is a guy that's finished top 10 in his last three tournaments. It's a loaded field, so I don't I don't expect the top 10 finish. But if he gets us weekend points, yeah, 6,400 is a steal. So Andrew Novak will start up there. Austin Eckert, 6,500. He won two weeks ago. I had him pegged as a gigantic fade the next week. Uh, Because it was an obvious letdown spot. And he finished 36th. I thought that was a very, very impressive, respectable performance coming off of an unexpected win. He's only missed one cut out of seven tournaments. And he's top 40 in strokes gained in this field. He's better than McElroy and Hovland in total strokes gained. And I get him at 6,500. So Austin Eckro will make my lineup. And finally, Denny McCarthy at 6,900. He's played really good here the last four years. He's made the cut all four tournaments, including 13th last year, and he's made the cut in six out of seven tournaments. So, again, we get these guys to the weekend, and they can get us some weekend points. He's going to be steal at 6,900. If you want to go to my profile page at wagertalk.com, free digital download. It's a free article. You can see my full lineup in there that includes Scotty Scheffler, and it may or may not include Will Zalatoris as well. Mm. Actually, it does. Uh, it, it does. Just to further further <laughs> solidify your Will your Will Zalatoris pick, I'm I'm I agree completely. I'm all in on him. Let's take a look at a finishing position, Nick, real quick, and just want to remind everybody we're running a special. You can get myself and Nick's golf plays. Both of us 
from now all the way through the Masters. Nick and I are coming off of some fantastic weekends. Uh, nine and four for me in head-to-head matchups. Nick is coming off a five percent cash. He's got another five percent cash that is up right now at wagertalk.com. No promo code needed. All you need to do is go to my profile page or Nick's profile page on wagertalk.com. Uh, it's a fantastic deal, Nick. Uh, congratulations on your five percent play. And this pack is only ninety-nine dollars for both of us for thirty days of golf plays. It is an absolute steal, and there is no better time to jump on board. We've got the players. We've got a couple tournaments and then the Masters, and you're going to get all plays Mm -hmm. from both of us at wagertalk.com, myself, or Nick Borman's profile page. It works on both. So, Nick, um, tell us a little bit about uh, your 5% win last week. You were on Scotty Scheffler. Tell us what you have up at wagertalk.com, and then give us your finishing position uh, bet for this week. There's nothing better, Andy, than when you have that kind of a top 10 finish on a guy like Scotty, and he's, you know, four shots clear <laughs> of the field on Sunday when you just don't have to sweat a dang thing. So it was nice. Uh, I've had it go the other way where you're sweating and sweating. And then all of a sudden two bogeys in the last two holes and you're out of sight of whatever leaderboard. So yeah, it felt good. Uh, I am back to another 5% this, this week It's my third of the season thus far. So I don't do a lot of them, but I do feel good about a spot this week. Um, and if anybody's interested, we also have MLS in full swing, had an awesome week last week, back to a profitable season. Again, as we go for our sixth straight winning MLS season, two ninety nine full season all the way through the MLS Cup in December. Let's take a look at a finishing position here. We talked about Will Zalatoris. That's a great bet for it outright. You can also get a good price on top ten. What's a guy you had focused on on a top uh, top twenty finishing position here? Yeah, this one's probably not going to surprise many people if you were watching last week because he was, you know, in the mix on Sunday. It's, it's Russell Henley. You know, he, pray, he played great last week at the Arnold Palmer, and I like him to carry it over. I mean, he fits the profile of guys likely to contend. He lacks distance off the tee, but we, we started talking about in the course how, you know, distance really doesn't matter around here. It rewards accuracy, and Henley really, really has that. Avoiding trouble in this type of a tournament is more important than making bogeys, so you know, or making birdies. So it's it's something I look for, and Henley's very good at, at that bogey avoidance. Dating back to the players last year, this is crazy. Play, Henley has played in twenty one events. He's finished in the top twenty in fourteen of them, so sixty seven percent of the time. That's that's great for a guy like Russell Henley, who doesn't get a lot of screen time, doesn't get a lot of uh, notoriety, whatever you want to call it. So he's just that under the radar. He's going to be on that second page of the leaderboard. I mean, sixty seven percent of the time. And we're getting two to one on our money for him to do so again this week. He gained strokes both off the tee and approach nearly every week he tees it up. And while his short game is also on point, last week was evidence of that. He went perfect 10 for 10 in sand save. So, I, again, I mentioned it the week before, but iron play and around the green when you do miss is going to be crucial this week, way, way more than driving. Finally, Henley has finished in the top 20 each of the last two years here. And, of course, he has that all-important Thursday morning tea time. It goes against the weather this week, but 14 of the last 16 winners, Andy, have been in that Thursday morning wave. So take it for what you will. But I like Henley, 2-1 to this week. He just doesn't have the blow-up hole. Like, he just – you're never going to see him, like, go complete McElroy or Jake Knapp or, yeah, yeah, take one of those. I had a a friend who bet against Russell Henley uh, last year in the Masters. And so we were watching Henley, and it it was just like he doesn't make the big mistake. Just off the tee, into the fairway, advance the ball, keep it in play, yep. take your par. Yep. Every once yep. in a while, hit a birdie. And <laughs> meanwhile, other guys that are taking chances, just you bring those huge numbers into play, and Russell Henley just doesn't do that. He's, he's not true. the most exciting golfer to watch because it's <laughs> not going to be a huge drive or like some crazy <laughs> – Amazing shot, but at the end of the day, you look, and there he is, fourth place last week. So great pick on Russell Henley at great odds. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Again, hit the like button and leave us a comment. Love to see what you guys are on at the players, and we got a great stretch of golf. You can take advantage of that by going to my profile page or Nick's profile page at wagertalk.com. Get both of our plays for only $99 from now all the way through the Masters. Let's make it another profitable week. Good luck on all your plays, and we will see everyone next week on Tea Time. 